Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much once again for joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of focus as well as Misty Morning. You know I love putting these together sometimes. You get that little bit of zing, that little bit of punch with the bergamot. I, I just like it, I just do. Anyways, if you haven't picked up any of my teas, go check them out over at darkmoontees.com or you can head over to my website, jchristina.com wherever you want to go. If you're a subscriber, use promo code YT20 at checkout and you'll get these for 20% off. Anyways, today, some will call it a sad day. I personally don't think it's a sad day and the reason being is I don't think it's true. Anyways, let me start out by saying, Canon Rumors put something out there, I think it was yesterday, stating that they have learned from their sources that the Canon 5D Mark V will not be created. It's basically the 5D line will be going the way of the dodo bird, the way of the dinosaur, however you want to look at it. The 5D is basically end of life. And, you know, before I get into my opinions here, I want to tell you why I think the 5D was so important from the very beginning. Um, but before I do, I want to say if you haven't downloaded my ebook, go over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Go check it out. It's absolutely 100% free. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. 10 tips at making super tack sharp images. Something there for everyone. If you're an amateur or a professional, you'll get something out of it. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Now let me get into why I think the Canon 5D series is just absolutely so important for the entire industry. Well, not only did it capture photo really, really well, but it also was a relatively cheap video production machine and aspiring filmmakers were able to use it to capture video, to capture films, to create on a budget, all right? They didn't have to rent in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gear to make movies and make the movies look cinematic, all right? Remember the 5D, the US 5D came out, I think it was 2005, and the 5D Mark II, which is that revolutionizing unit, came out right around, I think it was 2008, right? 2008, so it was a big deal back then. It was a really, really big deal. Like I said, movie makers, aspiring movie makers, just latched onto this and started using it because it was not only that lightweight, compact, really, compared to the big machines that they were using at the time, but it was so, so cheap. Now, not only did the aspiring movie makers use it, some large companies, large filmmaking companies, large studios, and even some episodic uh, TV shows started using it back then also. Only two years into the brand, let's say, two years down the road from the 5D Mark II coming out. Matter of fact, I took one out of the cabinet over there. We don't use it anymore, but there's a 5D Mark II. This is that camera that revolutionized things. You guys can see it maybe. Maybe we'll track into that instead of tracking into me. So anyways, this is basically it. That's what it, this is what it looks like. Now, the reason being is like I said, this is lightweight. You could pull off this battery housing here, this grip, and you have extremely lightweight camera that just did an amazing job. I mean, I'll give you a couple examples that I wrote down here. Black Swan. A lot of it was done with the 5D Mark II. The movie Red Tails was done by Lucas Films, I'm sure you guys know, a lot of it was done on the Canon EOS 5D Mark II. Also, even bigger, Iron Man 2, that entire Grand Prix scene, you can see it back here, that entire Grand Prix scene was shot with this, <laughs> right? People are listening to me right now and saying, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious, it was shot with this. Also, Captain America, I think it was 2010, 2011, Captain America, the first Avenger. Marvel Studios shot many of the scenes, action scenes with this. And of course you have that episodic TV things like for example, the show 24. I think season eight was shot with the 5D Mark II as well as 
a really big one was House. Some of you guys watched the TV show called House. The final, the grand finale, the entire production was shot with like 10, 20, 30 of these. All right, that's it. So it gives you an idea of the impact of the Canon EOS 5D Mark II. So let me get back into the story from Canon Rumors. They said that their sources claim that the Canon EOS Mark V development stopped some time ago and that there is no plan to make an EOS R5 version of the popular DSLR line. So right there, I'm gonna have to call BS, okay? Because we've had this discussion and I still do believe it to be the case, the Canon EOS R5 is the EOS 5D Mark IV, let's say replacement on a R series, on a mirrorless series. And I do believe equally that the Canon R6 is basically a 6D. That's my opinion. That's why I think that this is slightly off. Canon Rumors continues with the same source adds that Canon is aware of the popularity of the 5D and the fact that there is still a lot of shooters that prefer the DSLR experience. The source suspects that there is some kind of development going on to appease those users, but didn't know exactly what it was. Like I said, the R5 is the 5D. The R6 is the 60 in a mirrorless model. So once again, I just don't feel that this is authentic, all right? I think that the rumor here just doesn't have it right, okay? We'll find out down the road, but I just simply don't. It just doesn't make sense. Now remember, as of yesterday, all of the sites that are in the photographic um, arena. They all picked up the story and they started clamoring about this whole dying of the 5D. The 5D series is going to be dead. The 5D series is, you know, end of life or whatever. And this is what happens. You know, you get the rumors that go out and then everyone grabs the story and they run with it without thinking through it. And in this channel, I really like to get you guys thinking. I do a little bit of thinking and I give you my thoughts on why I think things are this way or that way. And uh, a lot of times we get it wrong, but we get it right a bunch of times also, like we did with the R5. I mean, we were spot on when it comes to this channel. We were spot on and you guys had it right in the discussions that we are having in the comment area below most of those videos that I did about the R5 and why I said that it was going to be the revolution, all right? Because I thought it was going to be a 5D Mark II all over again. And we see that the 5D Mark II was that hybrid revolution, is what brought everyone into the hybrid technology where people just said, you know what? We want video and we want photo. And we're going to judge you we're gonna judge your camera by its video capabilities. And that's why a lot of people say, hey, you know, why do you talk so much about video? And there's a lot of people that are just photo shooters out here that we don't care about the video. The problem, and what I say to all of them that say this is look, the bottom line is we are in a hybrid era, okay? Hybrid shooters. We don't just shoot photo, we shoot video and the manufacturers know it. And since the 5D Mark II came out, all of the manufacturers had to pick up their A game and say, you know what? We need to produce hybrid cameras, cameras that produce not only great photo, but also great video. And all too often, the cameras are rated based on their video capacity. And if a camera doesn't do 4K and all the rest of them do, People are like, oh no, we don't want that camera, even though it might be a better photo camera, okay? We know it happens, does it not, All right? Am I wrong here? So that being said, we know that that is absolutely 100% the case. Now, we also know that Canon understands that there's a lot of professional photographers out there that prefer, like they said here, the DSLR experience. A lot of professional photographers 
will not buy mirrorless as of yet because they like the OVF. They want to look out the lens and see the world. They don't want an augmented reality that we see through an EVF. The refresh rates aren't where they need to be in the past. Now I think they pretty much are, but also the quality of the screen. Okay, now we're starting to see those little EVFs up over 3 million pixels. They're looking better and better and better and more natural. And as time goes on, that's just going to be the way it is. OVF will go away as DSLRs will go away. That's just the way it is. Now, the 5D Mark IV is about four years old. That being said, it is time for a 5D Mark V to come out. It is time. Now, Another reason why I think that the 5D Mark V will come out is because it is like that bread and butter for Canon. The 5D has made, the entire series has made Canon a mint. They've made a ton of money with that camera. The same is so with the Canon EOS M series. The 5D is more on that professional line where they made a ton of money. Okay, whereas the EOS M series is that APS-C versus full frame that they made a ton of money on the amateur and pro-am line, mainly amateur, that want to carry a smaller unit, mirrorless. So, as I've always said, the Canon EOS M series is the number one mirrorless camera sold on the market year over year over year. And a lot of people are like, are you sure about that? It's a 100% fact. Okay, 100% fact. That's why Canon will never do away with the Canon EOS M series because it makes them just a ton of money, more than anything. And the same holds true for the Canon EOS 5D. It makes them a ton of money. Now, do I have a 1D? Yes, I have 1Ds. Why? Because it's a more professional camera. But the 5D, Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV are unbelievable and they are still professional units at a reasonable cost, $2,500, three grand. That is extremely cheap for what you're getting in a camera. Now, a couple of things that we have to bear in mind. We are now in this post COVID-19 era, all right? And I do believe that the idea that I talked about about three or four videos ago, that consolidation is mandatory today by all of these companies. Now, when I say that, what I'm meaning by this is that we need to consolidate these lines, we being the manufacturers. Why? Because there is not as much need or want for the units. And if you have so many different units out there, it costs a lot to create each one. That has to do with the parts, the assembly, and then housing the parts for the next five or 10 years. That's just it. There is a lot that goes into having a line. So if you have an M series, all right, you have the 5D series, a 6D series, a 7D series, then you have the 80D, 7D before that, now the 90D. There's a lot of different models going on. And now they went into the R series. So if you have the R, the RP, now we have the R5, the R6, so on and so forth. As you get more and more lines, you end up spending a lot of money, not only on R&D, but on these plants and those assembly lines that are producing these different units. Consolidation is a necessity post COVID as there's not as much money, not as much capital out there to buy new units every year, two years, three years. All right. People are just simply not doing it. So if they produce all these cameras, I don't care if you're Canon or you're Nikon or Sony or Olympus, which are done now pretty much, or Panasonic or whoever, you cannot keep producing a ton of these in all different breeds, let's say. You need to consolidate. So I do think that it's a possibility that Canon kills off a 7D or a 90D, okay? for the R, RP, so on and so forth. I can see that happening more so than killing off a 5D. That is that moneymaker, okay? Now, I do believe since 
Canon really is trying to bring people into their R lineup. What would have really been cool if they would have came out with instead of an EF to R adapter that allows you to take your EF lenses and adapt it to your R body, what would be cool is if they had an opposite adapter that people would be able to buy an R lens and snap it onto their DSLR, okay? Why do I say that? Well, we know getting people to purchase your lenses as a manufacturer is your goal. It's a way that you sign that marriage document. It's a way to get those people entrapped into your system. Is marriage entrapment? That's for another video, I guess. Anyways, yes, entrapment to get them into your, your, your line, all right? It's very, very important because it's hard for people to move and jump lines when they purchase two, three, four thousand dollars of glass. Okay? So if you were able to get a professional that shoots only DSLRs to try out one of the R lenses and they find that an R lens is as good, if not better, than their EF lens, well, you can kind of more easily migrate them into your line. Even if you just have the adapter as a means for people to, let's say, rent a lens and try it out on their camera system, okay? It would be almost as a bridge unit and it would cost Canon, you know, 50 bucks to make and they can sell it for $100, let's say. Anyways, it was just an idea that I had in my mind. It could be preposterous, I don't know. But I wanna hear from you. What do you guys think? What do you think about this news? I personally think in 2021, we're going to see a Canon EOS 5D Mark V. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna make the prediction and we'll see if we're right. I don't know. I do not believe that they're going to get rid of the 5D as of yet. We will see, right? The jury's still out, as they say. But we, on this channel, will just simply continue to wait for the official announcement from Canon if they are going to be getting rid of the 5D, the 7D, or the 90D, where there'll be no more successors to any of them, and they will just go solely with the R series. I just don't see it to be the case. Anyways, I want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you think that this is a possibility or do you not? In the comment area below this video, put your thoughts. Is the 5D dead? Yes or no? Is it going the way of the dodo bird? Why do you think it is? Why do you think it's not? Do you think that they're going to come out with a 5D Mark V or do you think that they're not? Do you think that the EOS R5 is a 5D Mark V? Mirrorless. Do you believe that to be the case? What do you think? Let's have this discussion in the comment area below this video. And after that, head over with me over to my creative Discord server that I created for us to chit chat when we're not here on YouTube. You can find that over at community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. Head over there, it's free. Join the Discord. There is literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and a few more hundreds of photographers worldwide that share with their community. And this community, like I said, I built for you. It is a creative community and there's a ton of channels over there to talk about everything. It doesn't matter what it is. So head over to community.jcristina.com with me and let's have some of this discussion after talking about it here on YouTube. Also, you guys have been asking me for the PRT. The PRT was out of stock. It was not available through b &H Photo or Amazon or over at jcristina.com for a few weeks. They are back. They look like this. What is it? It's a card that looks like this. I call it a gray card on crack. You can use this for getting your photos, your video dialed in exactly how you want it in post-production. You take a picture of the person like this, and then you take a picture of the person like this, all right? You can neutralize your color just by clicking on this gray card right here, or you can use this, which is the dual access color control. This right here I invented specifically for people that want to warm or cool their images, but do it the way it should be done. Now, why do I say that? What is the reasoning behind it? Well, many of you guys, when you want to warm an image, what do you do? 
In post-production, you take your slider and you move it over to the yellow, all right? And now everything looks warm. If you wanna cool it, you move it over to the blue. The problem is there is two other things that are going on here besides blue and yellow, right? You have your tint, which is magenta and green. And what you have to bear in mind is whenever you warm something, you have to not only take into account that Calvin, that yellow and blue, but also the other axis, which is that red and green. If not, you end up with jaundice people when you add yellow. And now their eyes are yellow, their teeth are yellow, they look like a hot mess, right? But if you take into consideration the magenta and green at the same time, you get a warming effect that's actually neutral warming. And that's what these do. You have a set that warms that adds magenta or green, and then you have a set that cools that also adds magenta or green. So you get a nice balance. And that's why I came up with this a few years ago. Anyways, the PRT is back, it's in stock. You can find it over on b &H Photo, you can find it on Amazon or over on my website, jchristina.com. Once again, like I said, use promo code, if you're a subscriber, YT20 at checkout. Once again, YT20 at checkout, and you'll get this and anything else in your shopping cart for 20% off. Anyways, guys, don't forget, if you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me, it helps the channel, it helps the YouTube gods decide what's good and what's bad. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, smash that subscribe button, that will be helpful, so you will now get all of my content when it becomes available, and don't forget to click the bell icon. That helps also, so when it is available, you will be notified. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be absolutely awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.